So it's safe to assume that when you go and create photos, other than the obvious enjoyment of going out and finding that photo and creating it, there's also an enjoyment of sharing it, right? Like I've never gone out to take a photo and found one and was like, oh man, this is so awesome. And I'm not going to share it with anybody. Like I've never done that. I love sharing my photos and I also enjoy sharing the, uh, the editing process. Uh, that's what this whole channel is about is helping you by showing you my editing processes so that they can help you. And so I was excited when I saw Adobe just updated their mobile apps for iOS and Android, and there's this new way to share. So normally when you share out of Lightroom, it will save uh, a new image file for you so that you can upload to social media. But now they have this feature called edit replay. And what that is, is it creates a short video that shows the original and the edited image and then the steps in between. And I think it's just really cool. It's nothing major, it's not gonna blow your mind, but in terms of sharing photos, I appreciate that Adobe put the effort into making this time-saving process because otherwise, you know, you'd have to go and create that video for yourself. And I've done that before and it, it's just, it just takes a little bit of time. So being able to kind of automate that to me is worth it. So I'm gonna show you really quickly, I've just got my trusty iPhone 14 Pro Max over here. And uh, we'll edit a photo using Lightroom Mobile and then I'm gonna create one of these edit replay videos and I'll show you how to do that. And it's just a lot of fun, so let's start that out. So here, this is a photo I took um, several years ago and you'll see it's the original photo and there are two ways that you can tell that it's the original. If you press and hold on a photo in Lightroom, you'll see that the before comes up and then when you let go, you'll have the after. So if there were any edits, like for example here, here's another version of the photo that I edited, if I press and hold, you'll see that there's the original. So the other way to uh, know whether there are any edits is below any of the uh, functions over here, there would be a dot if you made any changes. So again, going to this image here, you see how I made changes to light and effect and optics. All right, so let's start editing the photo. The first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, click on optics. Typically, this is one of the first things I do, especially when I'm using an ultra wide lens and I'm gonna enable lens correction. And so you can see that that kind of does a nice job of fixing a little bit of that barrel distortion and lens vignette. And we're just gonna, this isn't gonna be anything major. We're just gonna make a few edits here um, to the photo. So next what I'll do is I'll go to uh, color and then I want to get a correct white balance. So I'm gonna click on the white balance dropper here and I'm gonna put it onto an area that I know is kind of gray. And then you see how it kind of corrected the white balance. There's this nice kind of warmer tone to the photo. Next, I'm gonna go to light over here. I'm going to apply an S curve because that's how I prefer adding contrast to my photo. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on the little point curve button here, make sure that I have the RGB or the gray icon selected. And then I'm just gonna put three dots, one here, one here, and one there. Let's up the highlights a little bit and let's drop the shadows and open up the midpoints. Then I'm also gonna add a little bit of gray to the black point by bringing the black point up. And you can see as I go up, you see how the darkest areas start to get that gray? We don't want that much. We only want a little bit because it gives it kind of a faded look, which I like for these kinds of landscape photos. And so now that I'm done here, I'll click on done. And automatically you can see just how much of an improvement we have uh, from the original photo. Now let's go back to color here and I'm gonna click on mix because I want to uh, increase the saturation and luminance of the kind of foliage, the, the verdant foliage. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the target icon here. I'm gonna press and hold on the green, but before I do that, actually, I should first click on saturation at the bottom. And you see the three different modes, hue, saturation, and luminance. So I'm gonna click on saturation first, and then I'm gonna click on a green area, and you can see that the target adjustment tool automatically identifies which colors uh, it has detected, and I'm gonna drag upward. Not too, too much, but just enough so that we get a nice pop. And then I'm gonna go to luminance and do the same thing and make those uh, colors a little bit brighter. Now that I'm done, I'll click on the target adjustment tool again, that'll close this out. Next, I'll go to effects over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of dehaze globally. Normally I don't do that. Normally I'll add adjust the sky, but then I'm gonna add a vignette. And let's bring that midpoint in and also make it super soft with that feather. Cool. Now we're not quite done yet. I feel like the foreground has gotten pretty dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask to the foreground. 
I'll click on plus here and I'm going to select a radial gradient. And then I'm just going to make a selection and I can refine it. So I'm going to rotate it, make it a little narrower and just kind of put it along this foreground. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to kind of bring that out a bit. And now that I have my selection made, I'm going to go to light. I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit and open up the exposure and bring up the highlights so that you can see now that the foreground is a little bit brighter. It's not too dark. Now with the mask complete, I'm going to click on the check mark and we're pretty much done. The last things I'll do is I'll go to detail here. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'm going to take the sharpening amount. I'm going to start dragging up, but then I'm going to press and hold on the image with my other finger. And that gives me a grayscale view so I can see just how much of that sharpening I'm adding without having to be distracted by the color. Then I'm going to click on the masking slider. Actually, before I do that, let me zoom back out so I see the whole image. Then I'm going to click on the masking slider, press and hold, and you can see that I'm removing sharpening from kind of the flat areas. I really only want it along these edges here. So that's good there, and I'm done with sharpening. Now, if I close uh, the editing panel out and I press and hold, you can see that's our original. Then here is our edited image. Now here's where the fun happens with edit replay. It really couldn't be easier to do. Let me show you. So all you need to do is go to the share button here on the top and then click on create edit replay. It'll automatically generate the video for you. And then you just need to save it to your photo library. And so here's the video, it's 15 seconds long and you can see that it first shows you the after image and then it starts at the original and it begins building out with all the major edits that you applied. And then it'll show you the final edit right there and then a little credit to Lightroom. And so you can see it's, it's super easy. You just need to edit your photo and then share it as an edit replay to get those kind of interactive style videos. You can share them on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, wherever you wanna share them. And it's, I think it's even cooler because you can share the edited photo that you would normally share along with the video next to it. And it, it further engages the viewer so they can see what the original image was like and, and what you did to edit it. I think that's very powerful, to be honest. I think it's super powerful to show someone, hey, yeah, this is the photo I'm sharing and it's all great and beautiful, but it didn't start that way. And so these are the steps that I took. So again, I commend Adobe for making this uh, process a little bit easier. They did a really great job. The animations are really nice and tasteful. So I hope the video helped. Again, all you need to do is update the app, uh, the Lightroom app on your mobile device. Obviously you need a valid Creative Cloud uh, subscription. And uh, if you wanna learn more, I have this video here that will help you with your photo editing. Again, if you've liked this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please do so and click the bell icon so you get notified for future videos. Thanks a lot.